Doctor of Acupuncture, affectionately known as Doctor Needles. Just being silly. Uh, yeah, you gotta laugh. You know, nowadays things are kind of a little, <laughs> kind of you know, things are worked up in, uh, in the social structure right now. Hey, I wanted to uh, seeing that we are in uh, the fall season. I wanted to talk about a natural tip regarding. Um, this time of year and how it has an, an effect on our respiratory system, which is so important right now, right? Um, it's, you know, cold and flu season. We've got COVID-19 we're working through and we want to try to stay healthy. And there's all sorts of natural health tips out there, maybe focused on supplements and how you eat. But this one is just kind of like a lifestyle and a little bit different. So I just want to point out, I see a lot of people, and I'm, I'm also feeling it too. Uh, you got some dryness uh, with the eyes, the sinuses, the throat. Um, sometimes, uh, even the skin, you know, maybe uh, feeling itchy, dry. Uh, it, it's the it's the season, this time of year, dryness is prevalent. And we need to try to be aware of it and learn about what we can do to keep ourselves healthy because inside our nose inside our throat and our eyes it's moist right there's moisture there it's a natural protective barrier that dust and you know pathogens can be trapped in and then destroyed that's a part of our immune system how our body deals with um, protecting us from pathogens, things that are going to invade us, okay, germs, if you will. And that moisture can get dried out this time of year and cause irritation. You know, the eyes get, uh, they're not so moist, they start to get dried out, you want to start rubbing them, um, which will actually help to get some more moisture moving around in that eyeball, but, uh, or same with the, the nose, it's dry, you're kind of rubbing it a lot, you notice you're rubbing it a lot, or if you have children, you notice they're rubbing it a lot, it's irritated, right? You may notice the, uh, the throat being dry and maybe a little bit of a dry cough or um, just needing to drink some water more often. Okay, so, you know, you keep an eye out for this sort of thing. And, uh, you know, another thing that might not, you, you might not realize with the dryness is you may get a lot of mucus forming in your sinuses and your throat. This is a reaction to the dryness. So in other words, you can start off with the irritation of, a, of dryness, and then the body's going to try to respond by moistening that dryness. But oftentimes it's kind of like a hyper reaction that happens and you get kind of a an explosion in your nose. You may sneeze a lot. You may find yourself blowing your nose in a lot. The worst time of day is you may wake up in the morning with a, just a stuffy, um, runny nose that you feel like you got to blow just to kind of get going in the morning, feeling all stuffed up in that. So it could be dryness again. So the air is dry, you know, hasn't rained much. And, um, Within the house, as the heat starts to come on, if you're living in this area, which is New England, um, that heat is going to start to dry out the air as well. It gets worse in the wintertime, okay? And so what can we do about this dryness? You know, sometimes you can moisten your sinuses, for example, using maybe some saline solution. That can really kind of help get up into the sinus cavities and moisten the passage ways there and kind of alleviate some irritation help clean it out you know the uh, just basic dust that's in the air every day that you don't even realize because it's so small can get in there and irritate the uh, the, the tissue within the, the sinuses the eyes the, the throat um, another thing that you can do is simply boil a pot of water you know, uh, or you, you want to basically uh, humidify where you're living, your living space, okay? So at work or at home, if you notice it's very dry and your sinuses are irritated, try running a vaporizer or a humidifier. 
not a dehumidifier, right? That's going to dry out the air, um, but a humidifier, something that's going to put moisture back into the air, especially running it at night could be very helpful. Um, if you don't have one of those and you need a quick fix, just boil a pot of water on the stove. Um, doesn't have to be a, a furious boil, right? It can just be simmering a little bit of, um, uh, you know, you just kind of see uh, the evaporation of the water, you know, the steam coming up. Um, that's nice. You know, it'll get into the house, it'll get into the air. You'll notice your sinuses feel better. Your eyes won't feel like you got to rub them all the time, okay? A little tip about the eyes. You know, you start rubbing your eyes, you get the oils in your hands into your eyes. Now you've got a different irritant going on. You got to get that oil off the eyelids, you know, which could be kind of a stinging feeling. So I always like to get a paper towel, moisten it with, you know, water and just kind of rub, gently rub the eye to get any oils off that you might have um, got into your eye. Okay. If you got animals, uh, cats, dogs, and you're petting them and then you rub your eye, again, a different irritant going on there, uh, dust and dander. Um, but right now, just sticking with the dryness in the season, we want to uh, introduce some uh, water into the air, water vapors, okay? We want to get some steam going, some uh, humidity. You know, another thing to do is get yourself a detector. Um, I have this electronic device where it'll tell me what the temperature is outside and inside the house, and it also tells me the humidity. Okay, if it's raining, obviously it's going to be very high. It's like a percentage. It could be like 80, 90, 100%, right? If it's raining, a lot of humidity, a lot of water in the air, basically. But I notice that uh, it, when I'm comfortable, my sinuses, I feel like when it's in the 50s, 50% 50 humidity, I feel comfortable. When it starts to drop below 50, that's when I start to notice irritation in the eyes, the sinuses, and the throat, even the skin. Um, just recently I, I, I looked and it was like 20% humidity. I mean, very, very dry. I'm noticing my kids scratching their nose and uh, this is what I look for. And then I start to realize I've got to do something. Okay. And so I'm, I'm just boiling water on the stove right now, but I'm actually, I haven't had a humidifier in a long time. I'm thinking to get something like that, like a vaporizer. And it doesn't have to be special. You don't have to put like, um, you know, eucalyptus in there or anything. This is just basically putting some moisture back in the air that's missing, you know, uh, especially at night because we often maybe will fall asleep, your mouth is open, you're breathing in the dry air, it starts to dry out everything. Then you may notice that you're restless at night and it's starting to affect your sleep, okay? So a couple of things going on there. It's, it, you know, the dryness is going to basically destroy the natural layers of moisture that is an added factor to immunity to, to you know your immune system to prevent invaders or pathogens or germs from getting a foothold into our body okay that moisture helps to trap that and uh and basically process it destroy it okay so we want to keep that uh healthy the tissue within the nasal passages in the throat and the eyes. We want to keep that healthy and moist. So doing something simple like this can add and boost your immunity. Sometimes we, we always think about supplements and food and other factors, getting a flu shot and all, but also also keeping the, uh, the lining of these areas moist and healthy. Okay, so think about that and um, try to introduce that into your, you know, living space to, to keep those, um, those aspects of your body healthy. Um, this is also a time of year in uh, traditional Qigong practices and Tai Chi practices and, and the way we look at health from a five uh, elements point of view. This time of year is the fall time, and it has an influence on the lungs in various ways. Okay, um, there is a Four Seasons Qigong uh, exercise practice that you can do this time of year to strengthen 
your lungs and, and support your body. You can always check that out on my website if you go to natureshealing.info and you scroll down, uh, you're going to see um, three kind of images. One says seven emotions, the other one says four seasons qigong, and then there's a purification program. These are programs that I work with that people can uh, take on for self-care. And I just wanted to point out that Four Seasons Qigong for the fall. It's the fall set, and it's very healthy for strengthening um, the lungs, which has a big part to play in your uh, immunity, in your, uh, strengthening your immune system. Another... Uh, you know, this is how we, we look at things sometimes traditionally in traditional Chinese medicine. Another factor that is affecting uh, us this time of year, again, it weighs on the lungs. The, the, uh, it, it's getting colder, right? We're going from warm to cold, so there's a contracting kind of aspect to the nature, which works against our lungs because we, when we breathe, the active aspect of breathing is expanding, okay? And if, and if the nature, the energetic, the energy around us is contracting, it works against that expanding um, activity that the lungs uh, have and are accustomed to. So we do exercises to strengthen the lungs to help us fight that kind of that energetic collapse or that contracting that's happening. And there's another uh, focus I do have with the seven emotions. One of the emotions that uh, has an effect on, you know, emotions have an effect on different organs. And the one emotion that has an effect on the lungs is sadness. Okay, sadness has a contracting to it, a contracting sense to our energy. And it, again, works against that expanding uh, effort of the lungs and breathing, okay? Um, how do I know sadness has an effect on the lungs? Well, think about it this way. When somebody's very sad and they're sobbing, they tend to breathe inward very heavily because that inward breathing is very difficult because the energy is collapsing. Sadness has a collapsing kind of effect to it. The, lung, the lungs want to open up. So with, with sobbing, you tend to hear, <gasps> we're trying to open up the lungs because sadness has a way of collapsing that energetic aspect, uh, the energy or the efforts within that activity of breathing. So there is a, uh, the seven emotions program focuses on meditations, just guided meditations that you just can listen to that will, uh, I'll talk you through simple breathing exercises or aspects of the body or mental focus, um, mindset, um, these kind of activities, mind, body, and breathing, basically all wrapped up into a guided meditation that goes on for about a half an hour. Very relaxing um, and can be very beneficial for different parts of the body. And uh, the in the Seven Emotions program, the one focused on sadness would be the one to utilize during this time of year, okay? I need to talk about these programs a little bit more, and I'll get on here and, and talk more about them. If you're interested, chat me up on Facebook and um, ask me questions. It gives me ideas, and I can talk about them more health-wise and give you some natural health tips. I hope this uh, video was interesting. Please like and share, and we'll catch you next time, all right? Stay on the sunny side.